gentlemen, I have uh, a pleasure to meet you once again. And uh, my lecture will be a little different, my presentation, because as you know, I am not a medical doctor, and uh, this is just a photophysical presentation in which I talk on uh, uh, behavior of compounds exposured to uh, UV light uh, irradiation. Uh, I uh, would like to uh, present you uh, four compounds, and the main uh, purpose uh, of uh, my talk is to uh, show you the charge transfer interactions in these compounds that, as I told, are important for uh, drug uh, receptor uh, binding uh, mechanism. Uh, I uh, simply present uh, molecular crystal structure of these compounds. I uh, focus my attention especially on uh, styrene quinolines and uh, styrene pyridines. Uh, and uh, I uh, uh, analyze the optical properties in different phases and when there will be a little bit of time left. So I, uh, I show, uh, I present some applications of other styrel quinolines that I found in the literature. Uh, for, in order to obtain the uh, experimental results, uh, different methods have been used, uh, both uh, steady state and time resolved, uh, mainly spectroscopy. Uh, I used uh, for, to recognize the solvation dynamics and uh, electron dynamics, uh, how, uh, how electron <laughs> evolves in the excited state. Uh, the method on the unprecedented short time scale femtosecond uh, fluorescence upconversion. And uh, the results in order to analyze, uh, analyze them uh, more profoundly, they are complemented by, theori by theoretical results obtained on uh, t the density and functional theory and uh, time-dependent density function theory uh, method. Uh, as uh, in, pr in the first uh, presentation we have heard, uh, in the drug discovery projects, uh, even uh, change of one uh, hydroxyl group can bring uh, new uh, properties and uh, new uh, application, new, new uh, preventive and therapeutic properties for investigated compound. So I want to present uh, the compound you probably know very well. It's uh, pterostilben. It's uh, trans 35 d metoxy 4 hydroxy stilben and the uh, resveratrol uh, which we find in the red wine. And you see, uh, for the first one, uh, which uh, uh, exhibits very interesting different uh, therapeutic properties, uh, when uh, we substitute a methoxy group in position 3-5 with hydroxyl group, we get resveratrol that shows additional, very interesting, oh, there is no, maybe I could use the pilot. <laughs> oh, sorry. How does it work? Yes. Uh, Anti-inflammatory, anti-carcerogenic uh, properties. And uh, uh, the substitution of uh, one, because on the right side we see the stilben molecule and because in uh, styral quinolines and uh, pyridines uh, we have this uh, stilben fragment, uh, so I uh, just uh, want to demonstrate that uh, substitution of one 
uh, aryl group with quinoline, uh, in this very case, led to uh, design a new, very effective uh, uh, therapeutic agent against parasitic disease. Uh, this L6611. And in general, the sterile quinolines, I want to mention, and pyridines, uh, they may be used as uh, uh, imaging uh, agents uh, to recognize Alzheimer's disease. Because the point is that if, uh, if we could uh, earlier recognize and find the, the uh, plaques uh, of uh, beta amyloid mass, the, uh, the diagnosis could be given much earlier. So it's very important. And uh, this uh, uh, styral uh, quinoline derivatives, they uh, really uh, can uh, find application uh, in different fields, uh, not directly even in uh, uh, pharmacology, but also in uh, many aspects of modern technology. And uh, the, uh, the quinoline fragment uh, that we find in many uh, known uh, bioactive drugs uh, led to, it's, it's very important, this quinoline fragment. And uh, we simply uh, are, are able to design on this basis uh, new uh, dyes and drugs, and it's happened like this. And uh, in majority cases, these drugs uh, are uh, uh, may, may find application in uh, pharmacological for pharmacological purposes. Uh, while uh, performing uh, uh, scientific investigation with uh, sterile uh, quinoline uh, and purine derivatives, we have to be aware of uh, photoisomerization and uh, using, uh, using different uh, light for excitation, uh, we uh, may have uh, admixture uh, or we may have a pure uh, trans or pure uh, cis isomer or we may have admixture and this is uh, additional difficulty to carry out such kind of compounds. Briefly, I would like to uh, uh, to, to uh, explain you, uh, maybe I should not, but in order to be, be better understa understood, uh, how come, uh, what happens with the molecule uh, after uh, when it absorbs the quantum of light? So we, in general, uh, everything is stable, we are in the ground state, but when the uh, molecule absorbs the light, you see it, it is immediately in so-called electronic excited state. And in this state, the physical properties of, uh, of the molecule changes uh, time to time so dramatically that uh, uh, it seems that this is a different molecule. But uh, uh, being very short time in this excited state, it can be it can be this fact with, I mean, uh, the new properties of the molecule can be, can be explored in different uh, kind of uh, uh, technologies and uh, in medicine as well. Uh, so then the molecule has to uh, relax to the uh, ground state so it fluoresce and then can fluoresce different light of different colors and uh, it can uh, dissipate excitation energy can can be dissipated either by fluorescence and phosphorescence means uh, by radiative pathways or it can be dissipated by uh, non radiative processes like in, in internal conversion or inter system crossing and I want to show you how the charge transfer state are states are formed so uh, when the molecule relaxes and it relaxes in the excited, uh, in the first excited state, in the lowest excited state, then the charge transfer state can be formed, but pr only in so-called donor acceptor molecules. So the molecule uh, uh, absolutely has to contain the electron donor, 
and the electron acceptor. Uh, and it is even better if it, if it contains a proton donor and proton acceptor. Then the two uh, combined processes can occur. Uh, it is called a proton coupled electron transfer process, which is very, very important and uh, nowadays is uh, more and more recognized uh, in many uh, compounds. So I uh, uh, present these four molecules, uh, two ligands in effect, and uh, uh, in order to see how the photophysical properties change when the when the free molecule is, uh, is coordinated to uh, electron donor, uh, means uh, zinc tetraphenyl porphyrin unit. So we obtain, we synthesize uh, complexes and, and these uh, uh, properties really change as you, as you see in a, in a while. So it is um, methoxysteryl, quinoline, an oxide and the dimethylaminosteryl pyridine oxide and the complex with, with uh, the first one and the complex for comparison with isoquinoline and oxide. So in general, this uh, quinoline fragment is, is very important. So I uh, um, would like you to know that uh, even in the ground state, the nature is so complicated, you know about, of course, very well, but let's say such a simple molecule, it can occur in two, in two rotamers. So besides that it is trans-isomer, it can occur as anti and as in uh, rotamer, and they differ simply in the conformation defined by the, uh, by the, by the hedral angle between these two axes. Uh, so this molecule, so it, all time long, uh, we recognize the charge transfer interactions. So th those are experimental results. When we, uh, we check the fluorescence of different solvents in a protic and protic, and we change acidity and so on. So in this very case, we see that uh, the, uh, also the quantum yield efficiency, you know, emitting light is, is very weak. And the uh, stock shift, uh, the difference in the uh, fluorescence and absorption maximum is relatively small. So, and on this basis, we already may suppose that charge transfer interactions in this compound are quite weak, yeah? But uh, we, we shall see what will happen further. And when uh, we uh, protonate, when we acidify the uh, environment, we see that the molecule has different properties because in this very moment already the charge transfer interactions are increased because the stock shift is larger and the quantum yield, quantum yield is higher. So uh, it, it, it's very interesting to think that this compound on excitation, in the excited state, it changes its acidity more than 1,000 times. So PKA, PKA, uh, uh, increases and uh, uh, also uh, working in the in the large uh, range of different pH we see that two forms can be distinguished in this compound the neutral form and the protonated form and of course both of them they show different photophysical properties and uh, we it is confirmed also in the fluorescence uh, spectra that we distinguish the neutral form uh, which fluoresces uh, with uh, the blue light at 478 and uh, the, the protonated form which emits green light with the fluorescence maximum as, uh, at 525. And uh, also theoretical calculations uh, show that we were right at the very beginning that charge transfer interactions are uh, relatively weak in this molecule because we calculate we calculate it's the dipole moment uh, we calculate theoretical absorption and fluorescence uh, spectra with uh, very uh, laborious uh, calculations and excited state optimization this is very difficult thing to do this but 
we may derive important uh, conclusions that really the experiment is confirmed and the dipole moment change in the in the most uh, uh, in the in the most polar acetonitro is only 2.2.16. We shall see in the further step that uh, for the pure oxide this change is enormous. So we already immediately we can qualify this molecule as as a useful for uh, special purposes. Uh, so uh, th then we change we we we, we check uh, its. Uh, uh, photophysical properties in different temperatures. In high temperatures, we see that uh, non-radiated processes dominate. We, in the low temperatures, in 77K, we see that the molecule additionally emits from so-called unrelaxed from condom state. It means that it, from the state, immediately after excitation without relaxation uh, uh, with respect to to solvent surrounding the excited molecule. And uh, in, the, uh, in the solid state, in the solid state, once again, it, it fluoresces green light and in phosphorescence, it phosph in, in emits uh, yellow light. So these uh, features are very interesting for high tech, maybe not directly for uh, pharmacy. Then we check the lifetimes, how long time they live in the excited state so this is a method only on the, on the range of nanoseconds, so a single photon counting. So we see that it be, be, behaves differently, differently in different solvents, that uh, in aprotic solvents it gives only one, time, one uh, lifetime, and it means that 100% we have of one, one entity, and in alcohols immediately we have two, co two components, one for the monomer and one for probably associates with alcohols. And uh, in the protonated water, we, once again, we see that we have full protonated molecule, 100%, with very, very extremely short lifetime. Uh, and in the solid state, the lifetime is so short that we were even unable on our equipment to estimate it because, it, because it's too short. So when the molecule is coordinated with uh, zinc tetraphenyl porphyrin, its uh, uh, properties change. In the solid state, it uh, forms uh, different supramolecular constructs, uh, dimers, uh, ribbons, sheets, even the three-dimension three layers. And uh, uh, what, is, uh, what uh, we are looking for, uh, we want to know uh, how the charge transfer interactions change in uh, the complex with respect to the, to the ligand. And we see the following thing, that uh, the charge transfer uh, contribution of uh, electronic charge transfer uh, uh, configurations into a particular transition state was only 20% for the lowest excited state. And here we see that it is even less in the, in the first singlet, but it's in very promising in higher excited states. You see, so things change, and the important thing is that in such construct like a complex, we find <coughs> charge transfer interactions that appear only in the complex, and they are absent uh, both in, the, uh, in both components. So you see, so we create in this in this way a new type of materials which can be used, you know, uh, both in, uh, for uh, pharmaceutical purposes and for high tech. So, uh, so you just, lifetimes in the complex are longer. So it's even good because we can estimate, estimate them with uh, not so complicated equipment. And uh, for comparison, the complex with isoquinoline and oxide you see the, the nitrogen atom is uh, in different place than in the uh, quinoline and oxide. So in this, it, it forms also very interesting, uh, very interesting uh, supramolecular uh, uh, const constructs uh, in the ground state already. But in the excited state, in the excited state, we see that this material is, is even better because because we find in a complex and numerous charge transfer states. I 
have given only those which are in the complex, but, but it is published work and we underline there that these states, they do not exist in the, in the fr in free components. So this is, this is very, this is very important. And the, and how the uh, electron uh, is transferred, it is transferred from zinc porphyrin as the, the, which works here as electron donor in the excited state, despite that this is Lewis acid yeah, in the ground state. So as I told, in the excited state, the physical properties change very much. So the, the, the electron is transferred from the highest occupied molecular orbital, from the lowest orbital of, of the zinc porphyrin unit to the N oxide that acts here as electron acceptor because N oxide, we have to know, they behave as push-pull uh, compounds. So in one very moment, they can act as electron acceptors, in another one as electron donors. And the lifetime is very short, very, very short with respect to, to zinc porphyrin. So uh, all together with our result, it suggests that in these uh, compounds, not only electron transfer occurs, but also intensive non-radiative energy, energy transfer, especially that the quantum yield is very, very large, is 10 to minus four. So something happens with excitation energy. So it's dissipated non-radiatively uh, through internal conversion or inter-system crossing. And a very interesting compound is uh, dimethylaminostyral pyridine anoxide. This compound, uh, the, first, uh, uh, the first investigations in biochemical department that also confirmed by, uh, by our co-workers co in Russia in the uh, Pietro Zavodsky University. So they, uh, this compound leads to, to cell apoptosis. The, the, the leukemic K56, two cells have been used and it's confirmed on this stage that they simply, uh, ki uh, yes, they, they, they destroy, they destroy uh, leukemic cells. So it's already uh, promising. And uh, because this is quite mm, a polar molecule, uh, what we know from experiment, we can, we can experiment uh, experimental estimate dipole moment. Dipole moment, you know, that says us how the charge is separated, yes? So it's, it, the electronic charge is concentrated in two places, in two sides of the molecule. So donor is very strong, dimethylamino group, and acceptor is an oxide group. Uh, so already is separated in the ground state, but in the excited state, we shall see that it, it, it's even more. So it, it goes very fast. You need, see fluorescence maxima changes very fast with uh, polarity of the solvent. They, 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 sh they shift to the red side of electromagnetic spectrum. So it means that the excited state stab is stabilized uh, with respect uh, in, in polar environment. So water is polar molecule, you see, so, so, so we can uh, transfer it immediately to another, to another field. And the energetic, this is, those are quantum mechanical calculations which we perform in order to see, to see uh, how, uh, how cautious we have to be with respect to isomerization problem. So we see that in the ground state there is no problem, almost because the, no, I have to explain that on the on the, the those on the left on the right this oh I cannot so uh, when the arrow arrow is up so this is theoretical absorption spectrum and when it's down this is theoretical fluorescence spectrum yeah you saw so the the energy of the first 
of the, of the lowest excited state and uh, the energy of the ground state. So we see that the energy difference in the ground state is significant between both, between both isomers. So we, for this particular compound, we don't need to worry very much. But in the excited state, it's not so ob obvious, you see, because the difference is only, is only 411 reciprocal centimeters, so we have to be careful. And this is why, in order to be sure about, about the results, the one, uh, one solution is irradiated only once. And then uh, we, we check, we check, from time to time, you see the infrared spectrum film, and we find if at 470 there is a peak, because, because this is the, the CC uh, stretching vibration uh, uh, for the double bond for, for uh, trans isomers. So, so it was excluded because we, we checked very precisely. And uh, with uh, quantum mechanical calculations, it's possible to check also uh, the, how, how the dipole moment and how the energy of uh, uh, the first excited state will change uh, in particular solvents, in solvents of different polarity. The, the dielectric constant is on the, on the left side. So we see that comparing to metoxysteryl quinoline and oxide in this, in this compound, the changes is enormous. It's, it's more than 10 device between, between uh, ground state and excited state. So immediately it's qualified as a right compound to, to investigate uh, further. And uh, we calculated to have an idea uh, what happens if uh, a water molecule or, or, or because uh, femtosecond up conversion was done in methanol, so we did it for the methanol, for the pro, as a representative of the protic solvent. So you see, with the, in, the, in the protic solvents, this molecule, because it has two coordinating sites in effect, an oxide group and the methyl amino group, so it coordinates it, it, it forms hydrogen bonded complexes with protic solvents. And in these complexes, what was checked, you see the charge transfer interactions are even, even stronger than in free molecule. So it's, it's very promising because, because uh, water is, uh, is a protic solvent, it's highly polar, so it means that it, it will give good results. Uh, and uh, using the ultra-fast uh, femtosecond fluorescence up conversion method, we just, we just wanted to know uh, uh, what happens with this molecule in the first femtoseconds in the shortest time immediately after excitation. This is very, very, very puzzling question and very interesting. So when we compare two different, uh, the molecule dissolved in two different solvents on the yellow side, this is dioxane, uh, which is, which is a weakly polar solvent, and on the right side is methanol, is strongly polar and protic solvents. So on the left side, we notice that uh, electron immediately transfers from one from the donor, electron donor dimethylone amino group to an oxide group immediately without forming any additional associates uh, on the way. While in uh, methanol, in methanol, these processes uh, occur uh, on the lower time scale uh, because uh, hydrogen bonded complexes are formed. And uh, such complex we generated theoretically, what means that uh, theory confirms experiment. And you see, uh, I don't want to uh, enter into details, but this decay, those are decay curves. Decay curves uh, means uh, how, how the excited molecule decays 
within, within the time. So they, uh, uh, they have different shapes uh, after you know, probing at different, uh, at different sides of, uh, of the fluorescence spectrum, we see that they uh, differ very much. And so from these decay curves, there is special algorithm, special mathematical uh, uh, program by Marconcelli, Professor Marconcelli. We use it and we can, we can convert the decay curves into time-resolved fluorescence spectra, and from this we can get additional information. And please see uh, what happens. Yeah, this is t t t here. It's uh, presented uh, fluorescence spectrum to show you that that we we check on the blue side of the fluorescence spectrum and on the red side. You know, we we just we just cut it into pieces, and from this we get so numerous these decay curves. Uh, so when we convert it, these decay curves into fluorescence spectra, and then they were normalized with respect to the steady state spectrum. What for? In order to get information, how long time is required for the molecule to be completely relaxed. So for dioxin, it's always simple thing. And the difference between first shot, 100 femtoseconds after, after irradiation with the laser light, we, after five picoseconds, we already found ourselves in the steady state spectrum. It means finish, relaxation is finished. But in the case of methanol, it is necessary 35, uh, 40, for, uh, 40 picoseconds, means 35 picoseconds more. What means that this relaxation goes through intermediate uh, constructs, uh, of course, it is known from the literature that donor acceptor uh, compounds, they can form hydrogen bond, bonds with protic solvents. So we figure out and we compare it with the literature data that here is in the case of methanol that the charge transfer uh, interactions they go through the, the uh, network of methanol molecules, yeah? So we call it, we call it hydrogen-bonded assisted charge transfer process. In dioxin, the electron transfer immediately from one side to another side, and in methanol, it has to, it has to pass through the, uh, through the alcohol network, through the methanol network. And uh, 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 yeah, th 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 those are those are passive passive uh, applications of another literature, uh, styral dyes. You see in uh, biochemistry and high tech and so on. Uh, yes, and uh, th those are those two I was talking about. And coming back to the conclusions, the most important conclusion is that charge transfer interactions occur in all presented compounds. And uh, it's even better uh, because uh, I don't know exactly this mechanism because I'm not biochemist, but I know that the, uh, the porphyrins, porphyrins, they uh, play important role in uh, human, uh, let's say, system bodies, yes? excuse me, for my limited <laughs> vocabulary in this discipline. This is why we decided especially to take the tetraphenyl porphyrin to see how it works. So the result is that, that with, uh, in the complex with tetraphenyl porphyrin unit, everything works even better, you see? So it's promising. Uh, you see, stronger charge transfer nature in the complexes than in free 
uh, molecule. They also, this is for high tech, energy transfer occurs uh, despite the, the, besides, the, besides the electron transfer, also energy transfer occurs, so two, two processes. And uh, the lifetimes, uh, they are elongated in, uh, in complexes comparing to ligands. And uh, they are characteristic of uh, small quantum yields. It means that non-radiative processes prevail in them. And for high tech also, uh, it's interesting that the variation of colors is observed uh, depending on the, on, on the environment. And uh, femtosecond fluorescent up conversion allowed us to establish a different uh, electron transfer mechanism in methanol uh, means hydrogen, we are dealing with hydrogen bonding assisted charge transfer process, process in methanol and the advice for, <laughs> for me and for, and for you is uh, that uh, it worth while to investigate uh, this sort of complexes and maybe for drug development uh, problem, uh, we should look also we, at, at f photophysics, at photophysics because from there we can also obtain many interesting information that can be used for in general pharmacological purposes. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, oh sorry, I, I, I have forgotten, excuse me, Adams, uh, my faux pas, uh, my co-authors, we published several uh, papers. Uh, I used to occupy with quantum mechanical calculations, but as I told to a professor from Japan, you, one person cannot do everything. So. Right now, I cooperate with Professor Irena de Parashinska from Institute of Physics, Polish Academy of Science from Warsaw. And uh, I thank you very much for my PhD student, Dr. Krzysztof Oberda and Dr. Jerzykiewicz, uh, because they did uh, the crystal structure and uh, helped very much in the fluorescence. And I thank to Professor Dan Huppert and his PhD student, Dr. Yuval Eres, because uh, there we can perform the uh, femtosecond, uh, femtosecond up conversion. You see the equipment is very complicated, so it's necessary to use. This is why networking is so important, and I, I find that uh, conference, the main purpose of conferences is networking, because then you can know where, where you can perform additional uh, investi researches, investigations, uh, which you cannot do in your laboratory. And I also thank to Dr. Jakob Nizhning. Uh, he is from Petrozavodsk University from Russia, but uh, since three years he works for uh, Bioscientific Corporation in the USA. Thank you very much once again. And, and it was...